Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Yoshi or Captain Falcon, and like and subscribe for a stronger head next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Spyro the Dragon, the only build we've made so far that guarantees every game you will play in it will have a dragon. It's a tiny little dragon, but it still counts. Remember, it's not the size of the dragon in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dragon. the countryside. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need some breathing exercises, specifically burpees of fire. Next, we need ramming speed with horns to shish kebab anyone who would steal eggs. Finally, we'll take to the skies. I imagine that the ability to fly would be pretty helpful in a platformer. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your strength and charisma high. Charisma will be number one. Everyone loves you and your dragon powers come from being a dragon. Strength next. I don't know exactly what ramming someone would be, but it does doesn't sound like a finesse move. Constitution after that will actually use this for one of your breath attacks and it's nice to not die. Follow that up with dexterity, you don't wear armor which means that sometimes you're gonna want to step out of the way. Intelligence is a bit low, you sort of smash people with your head, I don't know that that would help you solve a puzzle, and we'll dump wisdom because you think hitting people with your head is a viable fighting strategy. After hundreds of episodes, rejoice scalies, we finally have a dragonborn. Dragonborn get plus two strength and plus one charisma and an issue immediately before level one. Draconic ancestry lets you choose what kind of dragon your mommy and daddy were, but there isn't a purple dragon. We'll go with red since that'll make our breath weapon deal fire damage and that lets you make a 15 foot cone that forces a dexterity saving throw of eight plus your proficiency bonus and constitution modifier. Failing that, creatures inside take 2d6 fire damage, half as much on a success. You can use this once per short rest and it will increase in damage as you level up. You also get resistance to fire damage from this, and that's kind of it. Dragonborn are pretty simple. Build your own background for athletics and animal handling. You're strong, and animals generally like you. We'll start things off as a sorcerer, letting us grab two skills from the sorcerer list, like persuasion and intimidation, both of which are going to be a little bit better with dragons since we're using draconic bloodline sorcerer. You get to choose another draconic ancestor that doesn't matter so much at this level, but we'll go for blue because blue and red makes purple. You get to double your proficiency bonus with charisma skills with dragon so everyone is gonna love you and your widow baby dwag a face you also get draconic resilience adding one to your hp for every sorcerer level you take and making your ac 13 plus your dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor for a scaly hide to help you hide you also get spells and cantrips light creates light for you to see with your dumb dragon eyes it could be a firefly if you want firebolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d 10 fire damage if you want to be direct create bonfire creates a five foot cube of fire that deals 1d 8 fire damage to creatures inside that fail a dexterity saving throw of eight plus your charisma modifier and proficiency bonus for a breath attack that won't run out. Finally, Ray of Frost is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d8 cold damage and slows creatures down by 10 feet for a little frost breath. You can't fly right away, but Featherfall will let you protect up to five falling creatures from taking falling damage as a reaction to gently guide down to the ground. Burning Hands is a bigger breath option with a 15 foot cone of dexterity saving throws, dealing 3d6 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. I'm not totally sure how many times I can describe fire breath, we're only at level one and I've done it three times. Also, I know some Someone's going to say this in the comments. Oh, you can only shoot burning hands out of your hands. Arrest me. Second level sorcerers get a font of magic with sorcery points to help you recover your spell slots. Though we'll get something a little more fun in a second. For now, scoop up the shield spell to add 5 to your AC as a reaction. A little wing guard never hurt anybody. Third level sorcerers get meta magic, letting you augment your spells with sorcery points. Extended spell doubles the spell's duration, which will help you when you've got a bunch of concentration spells later, which you will. Heightened spell lets you give a creature disadvantage on saving throws against your spells, so your breath will burn a little hotter. Not like your actual breath, like breath from spells. For a spell that's specifically your breath, take the Dragon's Breath spell. That creates a 15 foot cone, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures inside and dealing 3d6 damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It differs from burning hands because you can make it acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison damage, and you can send the cone out every round for a minute depending on your concentration. Honestly, I'm not totally sure how to do bubble breath. Black dragons have a swimming speed, so maybe acid. There aren't a lot of water options in 5e. Fourth level sorcerers get an ability score improvement or a feat. The charger feat lets you ram people, making a special bonus action attack after a dash action on your turn. That special attack deals an extra five damage, or if you want to shove someone, it'll push them 10 feet instead of five. So you can bully people off a cliff to hit a little bit better. Use Alter Self to give yourself some horns that deal 1d6 piercing damage. They're magical and they have plus one to attack and damage rolls for an hour, depending on your concentration. You can also use this for an underwater adaptation to breathe underwater and swim or to disguise yourself, changing your appearance. And you can change your appearance again with an action on your turn. That last one's not really in character, but the other two are. 
Fifth level sorcerers can learn third level spells. Fly lets you give a creature like yourself a flying speed of 60 feet per round for up to 10 minutes depending on your concentration. Doesn't last for forever, but it's great for getting around when you want to do a flying level. Sixth level Draconic Sorcerers get Elemental Affinity, letting you add your Charisma modifier to the damage of spells associated with your Draconic Bloodline. We chose blue to make a purple dragon, so I guess that means lightning. You can also spend a Sorcery Point to get resistance to that damage type for one hour, so that'll stack with your Fire Resistance to make you one tough dragon. For a Lightning Spell to use that with, Lightning Bolt forces a Dexterity Saving Throw on creatures in a 100 foot line, dealing 8d6 Lightning damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. Lightning Breath is great for some variety, even if you're not doing the official Lightning Breath from the Dragon's Breath spell at the third level. Seventh level sorcerers can learn fourth level spells. Stone Skin will give you a little more damage resistance with resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for an hour, depending on your concentration, which means that even though you're saving dragons, you'll actually be pretty safe slaying them as well, resisting two types of energy damage and any claw, teeth, or tail damage. Eighth level sorcerers get another ability score improvement. Get your charisma, because that's what you're using for all your spells, and five out of six breath attacks. For this level spell, haste doubles your movement speed, adds two to your AC, you get advantage on dexterity six saving throws, and an extra action to dash, disengage, hide, or use an object, or even just make another attack. I'd use it to dash in, bonus action, charge, and cast a spell all in the same round. Lasts for a minute depending on your concentration, and when it ends, you need to recover by taking a round off of actions and reactions, but it's definitely worth it. Ninth level sorcerers can learn fifth level spells like Cone of Cold, creating a 60 foot cone that forces a constitution saving throw, dealing 8d8 cold damage to a creature if they fail, half as much if they succeed, to amplify the frost breath to fierce levels. Tenth level sorcerers get another metamagic option, empower spell lets you re-roll an amount of damage die equal to your charisma modifier making sure that your breath is as hot as it can be if you're doing the hot breath i guess if it's your frost breath you wouldn't want it to be hot for this level spell immolation lets you focus your fire on one person if they fail a dexterity saving throw they take 8d6 fire damage and another 4d6 fire damage every turn if they fail the dexterity save again every round for up to a minute depending on your concentration this will let you dot instead of aoe to make the baddies doa 11th level sorcerers get 6 level spells like Chain Lightning, forcing a dexterity saving throw on one creature within 150 feet of you, and 3 other creatures within 30 feet of them, dealing 10d8 lightning damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed for the ultimate lightning breath attack. 12th level sorcerers get an ability score improvement, letting us cap off our charisma modifier to make our breath as hard to avoid as possible. 13th level sorcerers get 7th level spells, but it's kind of a weird tradition to skip the 7th level. I don't know why it keeps happening. Anyway, Spider Climb lets you climb walls and ceilings for an hour, which is honestly pretty useless since you have the fly spell but it's something spyro can do so here we are it gets even more useless at the 14th level as a draconic sorcerer because that gives you dragon wings which give you a flying speed to fly with the speed of the fly spell just use haste to double your movement speed and then it's like you have fly and haste at the same time that's pretty fun 15th level sorcerers can learn 8th level spells for one last bit of hot breath Incendiary Cloud creates a rolling wave of fire in a 20-foot radius sphere, dealing 10d8 fire damage to creatures that fail a dexterity saving throw. The cloud rolls 10 feet forward every turn and lasts for a minute depending on your concentration. Or if a medium gust of wind disperses it, which is pretty bad. But as long as the enemy doesn't have gust of wind, roll the breath out and get things cooking. 16th level sorcerers get another ability score improvement. We should probably invest in strength to hurt things with our noggin. That is a very common Spyro move, even if it's never going to be as useful as Dragonfire. Speaking of things that aren't as useful as Dragonfire, let's dip over to Fighter for the unarmed fighting fighting style. Letting you deal 1d6 damage with your unarmed attacks or 1d8 with two free hands. You never use your hands, so that should work well. You can also deal deal 1d4 bludgeoning damage per round to a grappled creature if you want to grapple someone with your choppers. You can also get second wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. It's not a lot, maybe just one extra life for your little firefly friend. Second level fighters get action surge, honestly probably the most useful thing we're getting from this little fighter dip, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest. Pairing this with haste is really effective and it can actually be useful getting haste active to get your draconic speed going. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype and champion aren't the most exciting thing in the world, but you get to crit on a 19 or a 20 with your weapon attacks thanks to improved critical. If you're building this at home, just get 18 levels of Draconic Sorcerer, you'll get 9th level spells. I just didn't need any 9th level spells to make Spyro. Big bummer. True Polymorph would let you turn into a big dragon. Also, this is the level we're not taking Purple Dragon Knight, which, I mean, haha, -ha, funny meme, but Spyro doesn't heal people, and that's what they would get at this level, so... No. Our capstone is the fourth level of fighter for one last ability score improvement, letting you cap off your strength score to charge everyone a little bit better. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. 
First, you're great at crowd control with big cones of damage to whittle down groups of foes at the same time. You've also got nice damage variety with fire, cold, lightning, and even bludgeoning in a pinch. Finally, you've got the mobility of a dragon because you're a dragon, meaning that you can fly around and get where you need to be. For weaknesses, your wisdom is really low, meaning hold person and charm person are big issues. You're also way too invested in ramming. It's never going to be as good as just breathing fire. Finally, 9th level spells are good and we deliberately avoided them. Don't do that. But if you're not focused on making this specifically Spyro, this is a pretty great way to pretend to be a dragon. Fly around, bash into things, and enjoy some really good breath. Just watch out for someone who can take advantage of your impulsive nature. Or you could be Ripto Shreds. Ripto Shreds. It's a Ripto joke. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Yoshi or Captain Falcon and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.